do know, we're just recording it as well, and we do know that a good few people also answered um, on the uh, on that actual poll that we said there that they've also been burnt before in investing offshore. So we know that there are some challenges out there, and of course tonight we really want to discuss those and, and open that up. Um, I'm going to get to uh, my guest tonight as well, who's going to be chatting with us. But actually, maybe right now, while well, before we just wait for the last few just to join in, uh, Lyndon, um, great to have you on the call with us. Lyndon is a chief product officer for a global company that deals with some of the big heavy warehouses and all those kinds of, of groups and big funds out there. Uh, and they kind of play around with billions of dollars. So this isn't just, hey, I want to invest $100,000. Uh, this is millions and billions of, of dollars that they're using. And he's been working with a whole lot of these funds and really has really looking at, well, what do global investors look like? How, uh, how do we keep uh, those kind of investments safe, secure, deal with a whole lot of the admin stuff? And of course, that's what we're going to be chatting about. So, Lyndon, I know you're still muted there. Um, it might just be because I actually muted you there. So, I don't know if you can just unmute yourself, please. Maybe just, you know, say hi and, um, you know, give a, give a sense of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah, hi, Robin. It's great to be here. I'm sure most of you realize Robin and I share a surname, uh, but that's because we're brothers. Um, and I always enjoy uh, whenever I get an opportunity to work with Robin uh, or to spend time with him in a professional context. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me. Um, so it's great to be here. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, Robin, you're 100% right. The world has changed. I, I used to say when I did this five, five years ago, I used to say the world is changing. Um, but I think the, the world has changed now. Uh, digital investment has changed the way investors around the world are moving. And the regulators at government level have realized that and kept up. And so now the world is in a position where it can offer really world-class commercial real estate at institutional, institutional level. And I think it's probably worth us just talking, you know, when we say institutional level uh, real estate, what does that mean? Um, so maybe let me deal with that quickly. So like most things, um, unfortunately, the history of the world has been that if you've got a lot of money, you get access to things that other people don't have access to. And the world of investing, that has certainly been true for a very long time. So if you were an institution, in other words, someone like Old Mutual or Investec, and you were looking to add real estate to your fund, your investment options, you could go to the best in class global real estate players and they would give you access to their deals at levels that they would not allow me or you or anyone else access to. And that's why we call those institutional quality opportunities because the institutions historically were the only ones who ever could go and participate in that real estate deal. Um, and that's what the world has changed through platforms like uh, the one that we're going to talk to you about tonight. Um, everyone can access institutional quality deals. And that's, that's really exciting. It, it's completely changed the world of offshore investing uh, for, for the people I work with, uh, but even myself, you know, I certainly would have been able to invest in these kind of deals. I'm now the proud owner of a portfolio of 11 different offshore real estate investments. Um, that's not to say I'm ultra rich. I've been able to invest little bits of money in 11 world-class commercial buildings, including office buildings, family offices, medical buildings, um, et cetera, through very safe, secure ways. So um, I'm a great fan of, of what we're talking about tonight. And Lyndon, you know, one of the things that I learned, uh, obviously, in, in hearing more about this is this, and, and as I mentioned, when we got on the call about talking about, you know, interacting with a lot of these big firms, uh, you know, big companies, I, I was interested in this, this term family offices. You know, I thought like, oh, what is that? Like catering for me and my family. And I actually, when we're talking about big leagues, I mean, maybe just explain what we mean when we're talking about, um, we want to access the deals that family offices are accessing. What, I mean, what does that mean? Yeah, listen, if you're wealthy enough that you've got so much money, so many investments you have to manage, you don't do it by yourself and you don't have a financial advisor who's supporting 30 other people, 
Instead, your, your family has its own investment office and you have your own two or three investment advisors who are just taking care of your family's investments. Um, and just like the institutions, it's when you have a family office, you can open doors. I can walk into a, uh, a real estate firm in New York and say, hey, you know, I'm coming to you with $10 million I want to invest. Let me have access to your best deals. And of course, those real estate firms say, yes, please. Um, and, and I think that's where it gets exciting for us is now we can actually walk in through that door and get a seat at the table alongside the institutions, alongside these family offices and get what they get. Because, right? I mean, that's all we want, right? We want offshore real estate that's safe, that's secure, that's best in class, that you don't have to worry about things like your tax return in America or your structuring or how you're going to do it. Um, you can actually do this easily, but also with the safety, you know, um, I think we spoke about this last time, potentially with this group, Robin, where if I went into, I don't know, some parts of Cape Town and tried to make a decision as to where I'm going to buy a, a flat to rent or something, and I'm, I'm just one block on the wrong side of the railway line or the wrong side of the main road, I, I, I don't have the ability to be an expert in Cape Town if I live somewhere else. And just the same here, you know, if, if I'm about to invest in Texas, let's just use that because Texas is such a great place to invest right now. Uh, if I want to invest in Texas, I don't have the time and the energy to fly to Texas to go and get that level of detail as to where's the best place. So I want to invest with people who are doing that, who are experts, not only in Texas, but then also in a particular asset class, whether it's medical buildings or family, uh, uh, you know, family homes or office blocks. I, I want the best, and I want to invest along them, alongside them. So I think that's why, you know, having that opportunity really is a game changer. Well, I mean, let's dive into that and let's go through a bit around, you know, exactly that scenario. Um, I, you know, want to touch base on some of the the experience that I've had. Um, in investing in the US and wanting to go offshore. I mean, ha have you seen what the dollar rand exchange rate is at the moment? Like we're under 14 rand, 13 rand, I think, today. And, you know, I remember when I started investing in the US in 2013, like the crash had already happened, but it was just so right. And I was like, listen, this sounds great. I've got to invest in the, in the offshore market. Everyone was predicting 20 rand, you know, to the dollar. We've seen it up and down. We saw it go up to 19, 20 rand last year. I mean, we've seen all of that, right? So maybe we must just put a bit of a context that this conversation we're having tonight is not, is investing offshore a good idea or not? I mean, that is going to depend on people, on their, uh, what their life plan is. Are you wanting to actually uh, relocate and um, immigrate offshore? Are you just wanting to put some money there to hedge against the RAND? Are you wanting to just diversify? So those are questions which are so unique and independent to different people. That's a different kind of conversation. The conversation we're going to be having is, yes, I want to invest offshore, but like now what? Right? Because that has radically changed over the last few days, uh, or last few years. And certainly when I did mine in 2013, what we're going to be chatting about tonight was just never an option. So I think I'm still letting actually some people in at the moment while we're just moving along these lines. So while we just let those last things in, I'm actually just going to just quickly share a bit more about the background and obviously what brought us here. Uh, as you can see there, there's me lying on the floor as a, as a preschool teacher. And that's how actually part of my journey started, qualified as a preschool teacher. And it took me actually to winning the South African Investor of the Year Award 2018. Uh, and uh, that was a real experience of, hey, if you have great strategies, you can actually really use real estate to create um, wealth and make something really work. And that was really, really important for what I wanted to do with my life. And obviously, since then, I've met some incredible people, spoken on some of the, the podcasts in South Africa, spoken on many stages, including that of Robert Kiyosaki, and really had an experience of sharing in, insight information to South Africans um, in a way that we all can actually access stuff. And for many of you, you might know that I love the Airbnb model because it's a clever way for us to invest without having to ha have a whole lot of funds. Um, for me, it was also about uh, you know, interacting with global people, international people. I spend a lot of time offshore uh, in America and around the world. 
um, connecting to other entrepreneurs, uh, business people. I love the, the concept of business and using property as a business as well to, to create that money and that income so that I can create the life that I love to live. I coach a lot of the people I see online tonight, are also people that I work with, they're clients of mine. It's really great to actually uh, to focus on creating that life that we love to live. And um, in this picture that we've seen here, this is actually one of my favorite experiences. I mean, we know Donald Trump is a successful real estate businessman, but what many people don't know is that the person who actually really was probably, probably pivotable or pivotable, pivot, was the most important part of his whole organization was George Ross, who was the lawyer, the creative person, brought everything together. And it was a great experience to have met George a couple of times and um, to have co-coached with him. And as you can see there, like actually in Florida, working with another group of international and people was a real a highlight because such a sharp mind. But it was in those kinds of experiences that I realized that what I knew as an individual in 2013 who said, I want to go offshore, there were some things I knew I wanted to do, things that I knew I didn't want to do. And one of the things that I didn't want to do was to just hand my money over to someone else, to lose control, to just hope that someone else knew better than me in what was going on. And those are the kind of REITs or syndicate funds I, I didn't want that. So I said, I'm going to go alone. I'm going to do all my courses. I'm going to learn how to become an investor. I'm going to go to the US. I'm going to look at the properties. I'm going to meet the managing agents. And I'm going to have to have some form of trust in this process. And let's get it going. That meant I had to have a certain amount of money. As a non-resident, I had to set, set up an LLC, a company there. I had to open up a bank account. All those things I had to do, and with those came a whole lot of challenges, which I'm sure some of you tonight also did over time. And, um, and I read as well, have got burnt in some scenarios because it is quite something investing offshore, especially in those days where, where you, you have to have this element of trust and everyone tells us trust this, but I'm like, but I, I want to have that information for me to read, for me to see. I want to be able to do the background checks on the people that I'm you know, giving my money to. So those were really, really important things. And of course, for many of us, it was, what is the entry level? Like, how much did I really need to go and invest? And in those days, it was certainly a, you know, a couple of hundred thousand you're going to need to go to at least um, put some money down and then to get private fi funding, private finance, because the banks won't finance you if you're a foreign non-resident. So, so started this journey. And, you know, over the kind of like the last five years, um, while Lyndon has been meeting and wine dining with all these um, uh, family officers and, and real big fund managers, you know, he started doing what they were working on and how this is starting to change the investing market. And this is something which I find really, really um, it's perked my interest over the last few years. And this is what we want to share with you. Uh, this isn't about sharing a deal. It's not about sharing content. It's about sharing. What does one do if one wants to invest offshore, where one wants to keep control, where you want to know what's going to happen, where you're bypassing a whole lot of the admin, that now becomes an interesting conversation. I think that's really where um, we're going to be taking tonight's conversation. Um, Robin, if I, if, I can just, if I can just jump in here quickly, because I think what's fascinating yeah, yeah. is, if, you know, you and I, we've, we've had these conversations over a decade. You know, I think it was probably eight years ago that you started looking to really go into the US and, and follow probably what's the middle, the middle option here, which is do it yourself. You know, you go and get training from an expert, whether it's a, you know, whoever it is that runs these weekend courses where you learn how to do buy to let in London or buy to let in America. Um, in your case, you then went to the US and you found partners, you met, you try to research, you set up a structure, you got tax advisors, you got lawyers. And I, I always sat there and I was like, I, I can't do that. I don't have the time to actually go and put in the time and energy you did. Uh, but I have two other problems really with that model. Um, the one for me that was fundamental is that the service providers that you that you got were going to make money whether you made money or not. You know, the state agent who sold you that deal, plus the accountants who were running your structure in the UK or the US, um, they were there just to make money. Uh, you know, the people who are managing your house for you, you paid them that monthly management fee whether you were making money or not. And that always worried me because then the people I had to trust 
and my own interests were not aligned. You know, they weren't only going to make money if I made money, they were going to make money anyway. Um, and that always bothered me. And I think the other one you've really touched on is that if, um, if I go to the UK now, or if I go to the US now, there are two different sets of interest rates that I could get if I ever wanted a mortgage. Um, actually, there's three. There's the one that as a normal American in America, you could probably get an interest rate at the moment is probably around 3.7, 3.8% in the US. But if I was a foreigner wanting to take out a loan to buy a house, you can add at least another two or three percent. And because more than that, Lyndon, I was I was paying still no, I finished paying that twelve percent because it was supposed to be bridging finance. That's twelve percent, whereas the Americans are getting three point five, three point seven, right? Yeah, and you know when the deals when the deals are about rental, you know the American market is obviously linked to the interest rate. So if interest rates are low the rental you'll get versus your price is linked to the interest rate. So you're not necessarily going to make that kind of money easy. Uh, the second, the third interest rate is those that the institutions get. You know, when, when a investec goes to a bank, well, they are a bank, but follow my logic here just for a second. If they go to a bank and say, I want to loan, the banks beg for investment, for investec to take the loan. And the same with big institutions. If you're a real estate firm that's a significant player, and you know the market and everyone trusts you because you've got three billion dollars worth of of real estate assets they're going to give you a, even a better loan than an ordinary american so that's um, in in the work i've been doing i've been curious but how do i solve those two problems making sure that uh, the people who are going to earn money from my investment only earn that money when i do well number one but secondly that they can get access to much better interest rates than i can even possibly dream of as someone who's sitting here and uh, I'm at the moment, I'm in Neisner. So someone who's sitting here in Neisner, how do I get access and benefit from a institutional interest rate for buying a building in Texas? Now that excites me. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's, let's share more around that, right? I mean, um, here uh, we can see some of the different kind of fund management companies that you know, you've been working with. Like I mentioned, actually, you're a global you know, product officer. So you're the chief global product, product officer. So maybe also just share, what does this actually mean that you're talking to these people? Because what's, what's really interesting for me is why we're emphasizing that this is where the future of real estate is moving. You know, we've heard all about um, uh, the stock fells in South Africa are becoming really prominent at the moment. We, people, I think, are a bit tired of the REITs and the syndicate funding. There's like a level of control they don't have. So why are these big companies saying, listen, these kind of platforms that are emerging around the world where individual investors, small individual, uh, small investors, right? Whether it's $10,000, $3 million can all start tapping into the same kind of deal. This is where the future lies, right? So why are these people who deal with billions of dollars, like you said, they're Feltman equities, $4 billion under management. Why are these people saying, we like the platforms that we've seen emerging? We want to be part of this. Yeah, it's a great question. And I, and I think the, the two ways to answer it. The first thing, so actually Feltman Equities is interesting because uh, last night I was on a webinar with them and they've just brought a new deal through, through um, our system. And it was fascinating talking to the guy is Larry Feltman. It's, it's been his company for years. Now, Larry and his, and his team, have, as you've got here, $4 billion worth of real estate that they management. So these are not small players. And yet he was prepared to give up an hour of his time to talk to myself and my team for an hour sitting in Niza um, yesterday. So why is that? Because normally that would not make sense. Um, you know, if you want to invest in a Larry Feltman deal five years ago, you'd have to rock up at their table with five to $10 million. Just that, that's just the way it was. But what actually happened fascinating is about seven to eight years ago, the US passed new legislation. And without getting into technical details, what that legislation enabled is it enabled um, th this form of, of syndicated digital, so secure digital syndication to be possible in the US. And a lot of people didn't really know what to do with it, but there were one or two players who started really doing it very well. And just last week, Larry Feltman, in the US equivalent of what I do, he went on to a webinar and they raised $24 million in 24 hours from ordinary people. And that's why they're giving us a seat at the table, because they're realizing that the average investor is actually wanting to have the ability to invest directly to choose Larry's deal and say, I want to be a part of this deal. I don't want to invest in a REIT 
where some fund manager somewhere is deciding what real estate I'm going to become a part of. And they don't want to have to go and do it themselves and do all the hassles. But I still want to be able to choose that I like Larry and his team. I like their track record and I want to be a part of his deal. And because you can now do that digitally, quickly, safely, securely with regulated, um, you have to make sure if you're going to do any of this that you're going with a proper authorized regulated platform that's got all the different requirements globally to be able to do what you do. Then suddenly Larry is going, okay, we can actually get a better deal by going to individual investors than maybe if I had to go to some other fund who is going to be far more demanding because they know that they're sitting with big money and they expect it. And that's why Larry is paying us attention. So it's, it's a whole change in the way the ecosystem of raising funds for institutional quality global real estate has changed. Now that sounded like a lot of fancy stuff. So um, I know it, it, it can lose people if I use this language, apologies. Um, the bottom line is that what digital platforms have done and I think this, this, you know, I see you've got something here from the Wall Street Journal, um, and this is the heart of it. What digital platforms have done is made it incredibly safe and secure for ordinary people to invest in the best real estate opportunities. And because of that, the best real estate firms are realizing that there's an opportunity for them if they make their product available to ordinary people. And that's really at the heart of what I do. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we, we're talking about a platform and, and technology, and it keeps coming to my mind around Airbnb, Uber. We're looking at Amazon as a marketplace, just the way in which technology has transformed, and now so much more the real estate is allowing individuals to access things that they couldn't have done before. As an Airbnb host myself, I now can actually access a global population who wants to come stay at my place without me having to do all that background work, collect their money, check out who they are, all those kinds of things. The same as Uber, right? That was the beauty of it. Whether I'm in a different country, it's all sorted out from the currency perspective. And this is now hitting the real estate market. And as you said, the big firms, the big tech people are actually really coming into that. But I think, you know, when we're talking about that, the main concerns are still the same, you know, Oh, well, it's a platform. How do we know we can trust it or not? I mean, you've talked a little bit about, um, you know, like, well, how does one ensure that deals are good? Or how does one ensure that my money that I'm paying whoever or putting into some account is actually valid? So I think maybe if you can actually just share more about that, that's probably the most difficult part of these platforms, because the logistics for them to be compliant with some incredibly strict requirements is not just something which someone says, hey, I'm going to create a website. Here are some deals. Come look. It's, no, there's actually serious um, costs involved for the platforms to get the stuff all ready and, of course, compliant because it protects the investor. So tell us more about what that actually means. Yeah, 100%. There are platforms out there that you can trust and there are those that you shouldn't. So I'm going to be speaking generally around what investors should look for. Obviously, you know, I'm talking about the things that I know we as our platform and the, the people I work with have spent. Uh, it's now been six years of developing. Um, and actually, I, I, I'll find it actually, Robin, and you can distribute it to the group that two weeks ago, there was a ENCA a news article about our company being the first South African company to be awarded a financial license to do specifically this. Um, so that's really exciting for us. Um, the... There's three things you really need to make sure about when you're investing in a platforms or platforms or actually offshore investing in general. Um, the number one is when you pay money, where does that money go? Um, you know, if, if I'm going to deposit money in an escrow account, um, you need to know that the, that escrow account is 100% safe, that no one else can do anything with that money until you authorize it, until you click a button that says move it or invest in this or invest in that. So that's the number one thing you've got to make sure of. Um, I'll tell you number two is that the company that's offering you the opportunity, I would, I would strongly recommend has to be a registered authorized financial services provider. Um, and that has the right license and authorization to do what they're saying they're going to do. So it, it really, re that would just be my suggestion. Not all platforms have that, but I would certainly recommend that's something that everyone should look out for. Is the platform, is the digital space you're working with authorized and registered to do what it's offering in that space? 
So that's really important. In the take case of our platform, we have two licenses actually. We have a, a category one South African license and a category two South African license. Uh, the category two is a full fund management license. We don't do that because our business model is we never make the investment choices. The investors are always choosing their deals, but we've gone extra in terms of the licensing capacity we have just to make sure that we are holding ourselves to a much higher level of regulatory um, authority and, and inspection. So that's the second part. And then the third part is you've really got to trust the deals that are on that platform. You know, it's easy. Uh, we probably at the moment, um, our deal team probably receives 100 requests a week from new people saying, can we raise money? And some of them we can immediately dismiss. Some of them are like, Somebody finding us and saying, hey, uh, there's this building in Durban I really like and I want to invest in it and I, I need 4 million Rand to invest in it and can you help me? Um, so we can dismiss those immediately um, because our requirements in terms of the people we deal with who list deals on our platform, they have to be that institutional quality. So, you know, someone like Larry Feldman who's got $4 billion worth of real estate under management, they've been going for 45 years um, they need to have real professionals running their show and they need to have a track record that financial institutions have invested in them. That's who we say yes to. Those players can then come and list a deal on the platform, but you need to make sure that those players that you are going to be investing in are that quality. And that's, that's at the key of making your investment at least that much safer and secure. So you know, we're, we're talking, when you talk about like a platform, so well, a tech, a tech platform, right? Like a, a marketplace. So what we're referring to is it's an online, an online platform where deals are presented and investors can kind of choose what they're wanting to invest in, how much they want to invest, if it's diversifying amongst the different deals. But the thing is they have choice. And what you started talking about is control of the funds, uh, control of choosing. And basically what you're saying is that the, in many ways, and it's not true for all platforms, but specifically the ones that you're working with is that the, the access that deal providers, now if someone's got a deal and says, oh, we want to put our deal on your platform, you're actually saying you get about a hundred of those that come through and you're saying, listen, we've got incredibly strict criteria, a whole lot of vetting, which I think you're gonna share with us how that looks. But what it means for the investor is they can actually now look, choose, do due diligence, on what has been presented, et cetera. And it's, it's like I mentioned, it's a bit like an Airbnb in the sense that people can see and select and choose. The control is still with them. And I think you're probably gonna chat as well. I know you mentioned it a bit earlier when you said that the, the funds are totally in your control, right? They, they, the investor is the one that says, yes, no, this must go some way because their funds are protected by highly um, organizations that no one like a, the platform can actually take. So it's not like the, the platform is investing on your behalf. You are investing directly into that. Um, into that. And um, I might be jumping the gun here with what you want to share. So, you know, again, I'm going to go to, I think, one of the next slides. Maybe again, that just gives some indication for people who are watching what we talk about by this platform. And please add more to this description of what we're saying as a platform. No, so listen, we, we provide marketplaces. All right. Um, and where, like every marketplace, there's someone who's offering something and there's someone who wants to buy something. Now, in our particular place, our, the platforms and marketplaces we run, what's being offered is an opportunity to invest into a particular real estate opportunity. It could be a, a, a building in, as I've said, in Texas. Um, at the you know, if I'm just thinking off the top of my head, we've currently got one in Portugal. Uh, on the platform, we've got a new building coming up in Texas, um, and there is uh, two in the pipeline, uh, also in the US and one in the UK in about three weeks time. So those are the those are the things that go into our marketplace. Um, but like any marketplace, the marketplace is only going to attract investors if you've ensured the quality of what you're putting into that marketplace. And so that's probably where, a, other than our technology team, and our compliance team, our biggest team, actually sits in the due diligence and verification of sponsors. And uh, Robin, I mean, I know that these slides you put together might talk about this later or not, but you know, let's just go straight there. Um, we do very extensive verification on any sponsor 
who want to be able to list deals in our marketplace. Um, they have to go through a whole bunch of checks, but uh, in their countries, regulatory checks, background checks, uh, lawsuit checks. We do financial checks into their companies. We do financial reviews of their deal history and their track record. Um, so it's a, it's a long process. It, it often frustrates some of the institutional investors or institutional companies because they used to they are used to people coming and knocking on their door and saying, yeah, I've got 10 million, I'm, I'm happy, let me just invest. Where we actually, we're putting a lot of work in their way um, before they can listen to our platform. And many of these guys are so big that they, they feel frustrated doing the work. And so we have, I'll be 100% honest, we've lost some really good quality companies just because we make it too hard for them to get onto our platform. Um, they, they've been brilliant. They've been top of the rank, but we still have that standard and I'm afraid they still have to do it. Um, so, yep, the, the amount of due diligence into the sponsor, we have requirements. So, for example, um, our normal sponsors have to have at least uh, $700 million worth of assets under management. They have to be going for at least 15 years. Their management teams have to have at least 50 um, years experience. We might accept people at less than that level. So you'll see, thanks, this is actually great to see this slide. Um, the tenure is where we play, that's our standard. Um, we might accept people at the lower levels, but then we make that very clear to an investor that if you want to do this, you, you still have, you, you can, but there's a sponsor who's slightly less um, tenured than the ones that we really want to deal with. But even a, even a sponsor who's emerging, um, let's say the company has just started and they're only two years old. If that person was head of a real estate firm 17 or 20 years at a very, very big established real estate firm, and now they're wanting to split apart and do something themselves in a more boutique, specialized way, we might consider them. But then we will make it clear to investors that this is an emerging sponsor, uh, but we've still verified that they are the real deal. And, and the kind of sponsor that an institutional fund will invest with. So yeah, we, we control very carefully the quality of sponsors on our platforms. Uh, we certainly don't say yes to many. I, I mean, again, I wanna put it back into the, the context that, that I relate when I hear what you're talking about. It's kind of like, imagine I'm going onto private property or property 24, like I would if I wanna buy something, but property, 24 has done all the due diligence, like thorough due diligence on what I'm seeing on private property, right? They've gone and checked the financials, they, they've checked the legitness of the seller, the building, they've done their, everything. So, so by the time I'm actually seeing what the deal is, private property or property 24 is not who I'm dealing with. They're just a transaction vehicle um, that is presenting it to me, but they're giving me all that assurances and all the due diligence. As you said, you know, you actually, your team spends more time on the due diligence of these deals than anything else, right? So that means that myself as an investor, I can go on and actually look to see what's there, knowing to a high degree that there's a whole lot of background stuff that's gone, that's gone there. And, and I think that's what's so interesting. Now, again, what, what, what comes into this is, I mean, you're talking about, if we take a look at the slide, 50 years experience, that they have to have $1 billion assets under management. I mean, this isn't just a, a, a deal that someone's coming to you to say, hey, I've got this little building. Who out there would like to invest with me? I promise you, you're going to get good returns. So, I mean, you're sharing stuff here, which is, you know, these are actually big players. So, to, so for them to actually be on these kind of platforms, they need to be, as you mentioned, like really serious and well, uh, well established globally. Absolutely. I mean, I've got nothing to add to that, that other than absolutely, we, uh, we control that extremely carefully. We, we make yep. sure we're only dealing with the best of the best. Now, I skipped some of the slides, so I don't know if there's anything you want to talk about here, so maybe just shout if, I'm, if you see it here. I mean, here you talked about, you know, your, your licenses and this. I mean, this was just, you know, incredible about, again, what this platform that we're talking about actually has achieved. So yeah, some credibility, right? I mean, there we go. What, more than 2,000 international investors have already gone through the platform. So that shows that they're there. And I know for you, you actually measure this not by the amount of money that people have spent on the platform, like invested as 
um, something, but the degree to which they come back and reinvest their profits again and again. I mean, what does that talk about? Because, you know, in real estate and, you know, trust, uh, results don't lie. So if there's results, well, they'll show up. And proof is always in the results, not in what someone promises. So anything you want to add to what we're talking about as in results and proof? No, I mean, listen, I, I love, I, I certainly don't ignore the awards, you know, the stuff you've got on the screen here. Um, for us in, I think it was 2016, to get the KPMG's global um, fintech financial technology company top 100 award that was massive. It, it showed us we were on the right track. Uh, but you're 100% right. As a company, there's probably one statistic that we pay attention to the most. And that is how many of our investors, when, when funds come in, whether it's dividends or the return of capital, capital gain, when funds land back in their wallet, because we have a US dollar wallet that sits inside the platform, um, when funds land back in their account in their wallet, how many of those are reinvesting it immediately into another deal? That for us is the most important statistic, because it means number one, the deals have been good for them, they're getting the returns they were expecting, but number two, it means our service, our product, the quality of what we're doing, how easy it is to invest, that's also working. So that's the statistic we pay most attention to. And at the moment, our, our number is 78%. So 78% of time when funds land back into someone's wallet, um, it gets reinvested within three months. And it doesn't get withdrawn and taken back into their own bank accounts. Um, so absolutely, you know, I think that's the statistic we, we pay the most attention to and it's something we're very proud of. So I actually want to move us there. Now we've talked about some of the results about like, if, if I'm trying to understand and, you know, from, for myself where I've either done a loan or I've had to become part of some REIT or some syndicate funding, which sometimes happens right here in South Africa, seven of us get together and say, listen, I can't afford this on my own, but if we all get together, we make this work. But the challenge of, well, let's set up a company, but then we all have shares and it's a whole big thing. And then what happens if someone wants out and there's this whole administra administrative nightmare, right? So I had a look and actually, just because I see one of the slides, if I'm just coming here, so maybe just, you know, I don't know if this answers it, but what, what does it actually mean when you've got this SPV, you know, the, your, your management and, and when the, like, how does this actually all work? Yeah, great question. So it's probably a good idea just to explain the investment journey and what happens. So yeah. someone will someone will log into our platform, or in this case, um, I should just say quickly, because I see there's a great question from Akhorsi about uh, what is this investment platform. Um, we'll come to that at the end because um, Robin, as Worldwide Capital Partners, runs an investment platform, exactly the one we're talking about tonight. The company I work for is, is a higher level. We're a business to business company. So we provide this platform with our deal supply to financial institutions and to sophisticated investors. And in this case, you know, when Robin and I started talking about what we were doing, um, he was like, I want to invest. Great. So I said, sure, Robin, you can go to here or here to invest. But he said, no, I also work with people. I have people I coach, I have family and friends. You know, Robin spends a lot of your time traveling. Uh, you know, I, I don't often see Robin, we live in different towns, but most of the time when I hear from him on WhatsApp, he's in some part of the US or some part of the world um, living his life and, and doing what I think we all know Robin does, which is live his life fully. And he's meeting a lot of people. And so he said, you know, can, can Robin have one of these platforms? And obviously there's a commercial arrangement that Robin pays a subscription fee, et cetera, et cetera, to own his own platform that we provide. Um, but that's definitely um, the platform that uh, I would rec highly recommend. On that platform, Robin himself with a team will have a look at the deals that we are bringing and he'll add even a bigger level of selection. So he might look at them and say, no, I don't want that one or this one, but here you go. These are the ones he wants to offer to his network of family and friends. So that's that's just a, a quick aside. Um, in terms of the process, so an investor will arrive at this platform. You'll sign in very quick. You like any investment platform, whether it's for shares or anything else, you put in your email, you create an account for yourself. You can immediately have a look around. Before you invest, you have to do your FICA. You have to make sure that we have to make sure because we are globally regulated. We get checked by regulatory um, authorities in three or four different companies, countries. 
we make sure that we know who the client is. So that FICA process, it's quick, it's online, you upload your document, your uh, passport or your ID, proof of where you live. Um, and then you actually get given an account. So now you have a US dollar based account where you deposit money. And once you've deposited, not, we can't touch that money. It's held by a third party, highly regulated financial institution in France, actually is where our uh, service provider sits. You don't know any of this and you don't see it. Um, we have a massive tech team that builds the sophistication of this. You just see that you've got an account. And then you're sitting with money in your account. You can browse, you can have a look around. If there's a deal you like, you can listen to the webinar. We run webinars with the actual people bringing that deal for every deal. You can listen, you can get to know them, you can do your own research, and then you can say, I like that building in Texas and I want to put some money into it. So you go and you put, click the invest now button. And that the investment process literally can take you 30 seconds. So this is what's fantastic, Robin, is that in the past, if you and I wanted to invest in a deal, it would take us months to set up structures, the facts, email, this, that. Now, literally in 30 seconds, you can be an investor. But the investment is probably safer than when it took you a few months because the amount of regulations that are behind a digital platform like ours is massive. Uh, our legal and our tax consultants, et cetera, that we have in the back end enabled you to get access to something in 30 seconds, but normally would have taken you months. Um, so what we do as part of ensuring safety of investments is every deal gets its own legal structure. So we actually create, if let's say we've got 100 investors from around the world and we've raised $2 million. Those investors are all shareholders in a dedicated company in the UK, in, uh, based out of the UK. And then that UK company invests on behalf of those investors into that particular deal. Once again, you don't know about this. If you're an investor, you get the comfort that these are professionally managed. That UK company, for example, has a professional South African financial services company that is making sure that the, the investment is exactly what you said. So it's 100% author, authorized and regulated. But from, and I know I'm talking a lot of technical compliance stuff, I apologize, it puts most people to sleep. But I think it's really important that people understand that what sits behind the screen where you're having a look at great deals and you can invest in 30 seconds is layers and layers of regulatory protection and authorization from South Africa's financial services industry. Um, plus our partners offshore, for example, the guys in France, um, they have a license to hold those wallets, those client accounts, that's just lower than a banking license. And so once again, they are regulated by the European Union. So we've got all these checks and balances that you never know about. Instead of spending two to three months sorting something out, it takes 30 seconds and we've taken care of everything else. Lyndon, I, I actually just want to uh, just chime in here on that because part of the hearing is why this is where real estate is going in the future because the technology wasn't there before is now creating the seamless possibility for individuals to partake in this which brings down the cost that original investors had to fork out to actually do all of this that now you can actually do it at scale because of technology and that is why people are saying this is something that really is groundbreaking and is where it's working. Like you said, you know, you're actually a tech team, right? The tech group really bring this together so that people can invest in the marketplace. But I think that component of it's because of all of these things. I mean, to get the regularity um, process in place and to secure people's funds and to ensure that everything is compliant technologically has been something that, as you said, has, you've been working on for five, six, seven years, and now we're starting to see it actually come together. And of course, we, as the individual investors who want to be part of a global um, uh, deal or a global uh, process, can actually now finally say, wow, actually, I can actually be part of this, whereas before, we had to do it all alone, and the cost to that was huge. So just wanted to add that in, I think it was a great segue into that one. 100% um, Robin, if I can, because I, I know, you know, the, the last five to 10 minutes might have put people to sleep. Um, because you know what, what's nice for the investor is that you click on something and within 30 seconds, you can invest and be an owner, a part owner of a superb deal in Texas. And I keep using Texas because it's my favorite place to invest at the moment. Uh, in Texas, where the shareholding I have, and it comes back to a point I made half an hour ago, 
the, the people who run the deal, this big company, Feltman Equities, my shareholding and their shareholding is at the same level in the, in the company, which means that they only make money when I make money because we are both shareholders at the same point. There's no difference. If, and, and one of our requirements is that the companies we work with have to invest five to 10% of the amount they're raising. So if they're raising $20 million, they have to have put in between one to $2 million of their own money at the same level and under the same conditions that the shareholders we bring into that deal will be at. So if our shareholders lose, they're gonna lose. So, you know, we put in all these things that just really make sure that interests are aligned rather than here, just some people who are gonna make money irrespective of whether I make money or not. So hundred percent, you know, I think it is changing the investment industry. Um, we're seeing it already. It's no longer, it used to be, you know, the future is coming at the future now it's here. Um, I think we're gonna see a massive change. A lot of the companies that used to do offshore and even now in South Africa, um, a lot of the companies who used to run webinars, you can invest by buy, buy to let in Germany, or uh, we're getting phone calls from them every day saying, how do we get a part of what you're doing? Because their investors are realizing that that's not the way it's going to happen anymore. So, I mean, you started talking about the people who provide the deals have to have skin in the game, right? Because now we know they can't just be selling something that's out there. But I want to be taught, I want to touch base on, on what, people on this call should also be looking for when they're looking for different platforms or looking at these opportunities is the kind of like ethics of investing offshore have shifted where people are saying, I'm going to make money regardless. Like if you're in stocks, whether you buy or whether you sell and lose money, I'm still going to take a cut of whatever that is, right? That's changing now. Investors are saying that's no longer okay. Just because you've got all my money under your choice, as you say, assets under management, there are a lot of people who made a lot of money because they just had those assets as a management. And so definitely for the investors on this call tonight, look for those companies where they're basically saying, listen, if you're not going to make money, we don't make money. So we have our own skin in the game, right? Because those are the companies that are going to be results driven and not just promise driven. Yeah, hundred percent. So I just want to touch on the first thing you said, which is that the world's changing in terms of the way financial advisors and financial companies charge fees. What used to happen, and uh, you know, not all of us ever had financial advisors because we weren't wealthy enough. But the way a financial advisor used to work is that if I was managing ten million rands worth of your portfolio, okay, as a financial advisor, I would. I would charge a fee called assets and the management fee. So if I was managing 10 million rands of your money, every year I would charge you 2% to manage that. So, you know, that's 200,000 rand on 10 million. I hope my maths is right. Um, and that irrespective of whether the, fund, the financial advisor made you money or lost you money, they were charging that 2%. And that has changed significantly in the last two to three years. The model of automatic annual fees just because they're doing something is falling out of favor. And I think the digital platforms are actually driving the change in this understanding of the ethics of fees, and they are becoming far more success-based. If you make money, I make money. And that's certainly the way our business model has been built. Um, so the way the platforms work, so when we provide someone a platform, uh, we do a share fee and the way that works, we have to have some money up front to pay the bills. So we're setting up legal structures, we've got compliance, we've got technology. So up front, there's a 2% fee that gets paid. And But after that, we make nothing. Even if we're looking after the deal for five years, we make nothing until such time as the investor makes money. And, and that's a general principle that we uh, keep to very, very strictly. Um, and, and that makes sure that the investors and us are aligned in terms of how things work. Yep. The other thing I do want to say, which I think is really important, that's your last point on your slide here, Robin, is that when you go onto the platform and you have a look at a deal and it's saying, listen, this deal is going to give you 15% in dollars a year, that's the projected. So firstly, it's real estate. It's what our partners are saying. This is what they're expecting. It's not a promise. It's not a, it's not a loan that they're giving you interest. It's like all real estate. Um, it's a projection. But we have taken their projections we have sorted out if there has to be withholding tax, like in the US, we actually have to pay withholding tax. So we have 
a, a team of tax advisors that sit in the US, the UK and South Africa, and they've designed our structure. Once again, investors don't need to worry about it because we've designed it to minimize really reduce the amount of tax that might have to be paid in the US, but that gets done, it gets done by us. And then if there are any fees at the platform level, but the, the percentage we show you on our platform, so if it says 15%, that is 15% with that tax and those fees already having been taken into account. So it's not like we're promising you 15% or saying, hey, this deal's projecting 15%. But then when you get your money and you realize it's 6%, we go, oh no, the deal made 15%, but we've had to pay 4% tax and our fees are 3%. So sorry, you're only getting seven. We don't do that. It's, we don't think that's ethical or transparent. Um, our platform is built on the model of trust and also more and more regulators are expecting us to be trustworthy. So we have the projections on the platform to already take into account any fees or taxes that might have to be paid in the country where the deal sits. So Lyndon, I mean, we, we've chatted about this, you've shared, well, you could see this or see that. Uh, I recall that, I mean, you're open to just sharing pe with people like what it looks like. I mean, do you want to take us through? Because I think they, 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 there's some stuff there just to see like, what does it mean to have a platform? I mean, if I, if I get that share, I think I can share this, or well, I can give you, um, uh, I can make that, I mean, are you open to that? Do you want to share that with people as well? Absolutely, I can do that, Robin. Just give me a sec, you caught me by surprise. So let me just Sorry. open up. Well, let me well, just... While he does that, um, like I mentioned before, you know, we're, our drive really here is to, to give you some insight into what's happening in the world out there, where it's going, um, what people are looking for, and... Like I'm always wanting to invest safely, securely, and profitably. Those are the three things that are most important. And I'm the person, those of you who know me on this call, because I work with you, I coach you, you know that I don't even have rental agents managing my properties. I'm going to do it, except in the States, because that's somewhere far away, right? That's a different dynamic. But part of what I had shared in the WhatsApp messages is, you know, a couple of months ago, post-COVID, suddenly I, you know, I had like a hundred and it was seven thousand um, a dollar bill because of stuff that they, that had to get rent ready again, and and suddenly this whole aspect of well keeping in control doesn't actually seem like I have a lot of control because I'm still using some agent over there who's vetting those tenants, and good job that happened, right? So for me, this whole dynamic is coming at a good stage. It's like, listen, we we really do need to rethink about how we're investing offshore. We've seen the, the RAND is coming right back down. Is this a good time? As I said, that's up for you to make. But what you need to do is, as Lyndon has shared with you tonight, there are just so many important things to prevent that, that frustration of getting burned because you didn't know what to do or there were wrong people. Someone told you something. You know, uh, this for me is, is what's changing it. And like I mentioned, it's the proof that's in the pudding. It's not just some person on stage saying, if you invest with us, we will do this. This is way bigger than that. This is global. And if these big family offices and big companies are investing the same kind of deal, then, well, then I have my sense of, well, there must be something there that's legit around it, right? Okay, Lyndon, you have, I, I see you gone in. So tell us more about what we're looking at. Sure, Robin. So this is what the marketplace looks like once you've logged in. You'll see I'm logging in here as a, we have a demonstration account in my personal name. So this is a demonstration account. It shows that there's Linden. Um, when you come on, there are, we have two different kinds of assets. One's real estate. We do do something else as well called alternative investments. This might be private equity or other things, but I'm not going to get into that for today. Um, there's real estate. These are the two deals, for example, Robin, that you have selected for your platform, for your family and friends that I know you've offered and said, guys, I like these. Um, they, and this is just to give you an example. Um, this one was recently funded, so you can also see anything that's closed recently in the last month or so in here. Um, what I enjoy and appreciate about uh, the platform is it's very, you can come and you can click on it. It'll open up that particular deal. There's a whole range of information. You can read the overview, the market summary, the investment summary uh, that, that lays out all the aspects of the deal, the purchase price, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a projected returns calculator. Once again, transparency is vital. So you'll come in here, it'll show you what are the returns without fees 
Okay, and then you can actually click the button and say no thanks, please show me the returns with fees, so that you actually get a sense of what is what is the impact of the fees that the platform is charging on on the investment. So it's very transparent. Uh, there are no surprises. It gives you the information on the sponsor. Um, you can also understand and research their investment committee if you want. You can go and find who are these people. You can Google them. You can research them to make sure you're comfortable. All the documents you need, you can download if you want to see the actual detailed documents. Um, I can't give you a full explanation tonight. I know we're running out of time and I want to respect our community's time. Um, the risk category, so you can immediately have a look at what kind of risk the deal is. There's also a um, sponsor category. So as, as I mentioned earlier, this particular, this is the, uh, another Feltman deal that closed um, a month ago. You'll see here that there's a tenured investor. So they are a um, significant player. They've got more than a billion dollars assets under management, et cetera. And then you could invest um, by just clicking, actually, let me go to a marketplace deal. And let me actually choose this one. It's quite an interesting deal. This is a company that John Rabi, a South African, is a partner with in Portugal. Um, they are their development company, a uh, massive company once again. I think they have, uh, I can't guess, but I think they've got about $2.8 billion. Um, it's reward properties, assets under management in Europe. They really know what they're doing. And they're partnering with John Rabi to see if they can duplicate some of the things that John Robbie did in South Africa in terms of um, things like, um, let's think about one of his developments in SA. He did Safety City, City here in, in Cape Town. Exactly. exactly. So they, they're tapping into his knowledge around the Century City. You could come in here um, and then you click on, if, if I like the deal, I literally click on uh, invest in this deal. Um, depending on how much wallets, US dollars is in your, in your wallet, you can click. You can click continue and then there's, I'm going to do it. Um, sorry, it tells me I didn't have enough, so that's fine. Um, this particular uh, uh, demonstration account, there's a minimum, so it's not going to allow me to invest because it's not enough money in the wallet. Um, but you can click the invest in this deal button and then you get invested and I become an investment in this deal. Now, I don't, Robin, tonight wasn't really about individual deals. So, I, you know, I think if people are interested, we can create a, a way for people to find out more. They can reach out to you um, and we can explain, for example, individual deals and how they work so that when they go onto the marketplace, they can actually understand what they're seeing and um, that we can certainly arrange if there are people who are interested. I think tonight was broader. It was more about um, what is the future of digital investing and, and where platforms are playing a role in a particular deal. Um, but if there are people interested, we can certainly uh, create opportunities for those conversations. Sure. So, well, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to hear if there are specific questions because, you know, for people who might have been hearing for the first time what it actually means or what their concerns may still be, maybe there's some clarification. I did see that, as you said, there are sometimes minimum investments. I mean, that varies from deal to deal, right? I mean, that's, and that's really a, a, a conversation you know, whether someone's got 7 million Rand or whether they've got, you know, 100,000 Rand, there are lots of different opportunities and it's not all the same amount. And, you know, you and I have discussed extensively around this, that there are a lot of people out there who, you know, who want to go offshore, but they're like, oh, well, I don't have enough money. Well, that actually be that, that that kind of like minimum investment can actually vary. And most certainly if they still are like, well, it sounds good. I'm interested in some of those different options out there. Well, definitely then reach out because, I have some access to some of the people in these kind of companies that we can still create that minimum level that may work for them, right? So, so just because you saw the hundred thousand dollars there, so one point four million rand, like, oh, just I don't have that cash lying around. Um, you might actually say, well, okay, that's not for me. But what I'm sharing tonight is that that's not necessarily true. We have access as well around the back to go and say, listen, you can actually do it with a, with a, with a lesser amount than that. So rather just reach out. But the most important thing is still just go on the platform and look, you know, it's free. There's no cost for you to go on, register, sign in. Um, if you go to worldwidecapitalpartners.com, uh, you will just see there the, you know, the, the, the take me to the investing platform email and your name that's it and then you can have a look play around it's all there it's for free um take a look as we all know you know you need to put some time and effort into becoming familiar with what you're wanting to create 
And of course, if you've like, you know, got any questions, then please do, you know, do ask. And I think, um, uh, there we go. I can see that some well, comments are coming in, more opposed. I haven't actually had a look, so let me just see. I don't know if Linda, if you've seen a question there that maybe needs to answer before we start wrapping up. Yeah, sure. I think the the um the two. Um before I do that, I just want to reiterate what you've said, Robin. So if anyone's interested, they sh I, I assume you they they know how to contact you and because you know this uh I'm a B2B. So the, the company I work with doesn't necessarily deal directly with investors. We offer platforms to other people who then offer that to their communities and their networks. So I think people can reach out to you 100%. And, and, and you know, you're 100 percent right. There are minimums on the platforms, um, but those are flexible based on the platform owner. And there are ways. So if you want to test it, for example, at low amounts or you only have lower amounts to invest, please do reach out to Robin and he'll help you sort that out because um, we really want to make this available to people who want to invest offshore safely and securely. That's the bottom line. Um, yep. So Luisa asked a question, the platform looks similar to Wealth Migrate. Is there any collaboration or just different organizations? Great question, Luisa. I work for a holding company, which is based out of Hong Kong called the Global Wealth Group. Uh, one of our subsidiary companies is Wealth Migrate. So it is, they use exactly the same technology that we use because it's I, the, the, the team I work for provides that technology uh, to Wealth Migrate as well. Uh, and then Kanya said, thanks for this fantastic presentation. Can such platforms help with private equity funds for golden visa or citizenship by investment platforms? Um, I'd need to understand a little bit more about what you're asking. So once again, please reach out through Robin. I'm happy to answer that. We are currently in the process of working with, for example, the one of the companies we showed you tonight, Reward, they have just launched a golden visa fund in Portugal, and they are wanting to use our platform to make that investment opportunity to people who would like to invest in their fund and get that golden visa um, while using our platform. So that is something that uh, is available, uh, and it's really on a case by case basis, whether that golden visa fund meets our requirements for the kind of people that we allow to bring deals to the platform. Great. So, uh, any other specific questions are coming up as we start just wrapping it up? Um, I can't quite see at this moment. Just Those are the only ones that have come up in the chat. So, I think um, either everyone's asleep because uh, of all the technical compliance conversations. Or hopefully um, we've been able to introduce people to a new way of thinking about offshore investing, um, which really is the future of, of how real estate is going to be transacted, um, in particular yeah. giving people access to commercial deals, which is which is where the opportunities lie. Yeah, and I mean, you know, when we chatted, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago with Grant, um, with Grant Smear on this, you know, he was saying like, we need to be creating cash flow here in the country and cash flow off the country. And um, and I think that is the, the aspiration of a lot of people. And five, six years ago, it meant you had to really put effort and time and commitment into that, like I did. And, you know, as you know, I've slowly been, you know, selling my properties off in the US and, and making my money work way harder elsewhere from doing that model. It's just, it's just not sustainable for me any longer from that perspective, um, except that I could go and visit them and, you know, but how many times do I really want to go to Oklahoma and visit my property? <laughs> I've passed a few times. Okay, nice. There we go. Three bed, two bath, standard stock in some estate. Great, you know. Thank you. But take my photograph. Look, everyone, I have a US property. I'm beyond that. I want my cash flow. I want my, my wealth to increase. I want to diversify. You know, that is the drive for me. So, and the, the, the headache. As accountants, I mean, you know what that's like, you know, having to have these calls and then tax, all these tax forms, my word. And I promise you, there are people on this call who've got the same experience at different times around it. So, um, yeah, if there's any other question, please do reach out. You know, the thing, like, you know, we may be brothers on this, but you can hear the intelligence, the insight. You know, this is what Lyndon's been doing for a long time. And, and as I said, he's the chief global officer. He knows what's going on. So that's why I'm saying I went in on these kind of platforms where I'm going to be making decisions based on real stuff. And that's the difference here is that 
it's like I have the insight, you know, with Lyndon there, I've got direct access to the insight. I'm not just saying, hey, here's a new platform. Doesn't it look nice? I'm like, no, I want to know my, my skin is in the game. My brother, his, his skin is there, right? Um, we have a good relationship. So there's no ways that this is going to um, impact that. So again, you know, that's that I'm putting my brand. And of course, I, I'm, I want that inside edge. I want to know what's going on. I don't want to just be another person who's just trusting randomly. No ways. So there we go. I hope it's all. Robin, if, I, if I can, I, I just see Louisa's comment here. Earning in dollars while in South Africa is the way to go. Uh, Louisa, I cannot agree with you more. Uh, I love this country. I have no desire to ever live anywhere else. I'm uh, proudly and deeply South African. Um, and as a financial strategy, I think it's wise that I've diversified my, my wealth. And for me to be able to have offshore um, real estate that earns me dollars is just smart. So I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not here to give people advice. I'm just sharing my strategy personally. I love the fact that it's now easy for me to do that. Yep, excellent. So I think that's a great one for us to, um, to, to, to end off on. Um, like I say, go sign up, just play around with it, take a look. Because also once you're online there, then when we send out and say, hey guys, this looks like an interesting deal. What do you think? You can be notified because obviously if we're not on the database, then if you're not on it, we don't know to reach out to you. And as Lyndon says, we're not financial providers here telling you how you should invest or what you should invest. We're just interested in saying, wow, this actually looks really interesting. Uh, this is a platform that we can use to make our investing um, so much simpler, uh, securely, profitably, safely. I mean, those are the fundamental things. I mean, that's I've got skin in the game in that, right? So that's, I think, what is fundamentally there. So I did put the link in there. So take a look. Just... As I said, go in, play around, test it out, have a, you know, be aware of that. And if there are no other questions, any last comments that you want to make, Lyndon, before we just sign out? Yeah, you know, I think the last thing I want to say is last night I was on that webinar with Larry Feltman from Feltman Equities. And um, I really, if, if you want to understand the quality of people we're talking about, reach out to Robin. We've made that recording of that webinar available. And listen to this guy talk about, for 15 minutes, about real estate and his deals. And you'll understand that we're talking about a different level of real estate investment that is that is it is worlds apart from a, a kind of a weekend course and how to go to the london and get a buy to rent these are professionals that operate at leagues that uh, every time i speak with people like them i just get so grateful that the, the changes that have happened in the world are firstly allowing me to engage with them and understand their way of doing business because it is just remarkable, but also then the way they put deals together and how they're making it available. So just as a learning experience, uh, you know, just that, that kind of webinar is so good to show um, the quality of people we're talking about. So you know, if, if you do want to just, just to learn, reach out to Robin um, and I'm happy to share that webinar with the community. Excellent, great. Well, then that brings us to the end. Um, I'm actually in Jeffrey's Bay at the moment, spending a month here. Um, for those of you who've seen me on my Facebook, uh, yes, this morning was absolutely pretty. Um, woke up, I'm right here on the surf break. Um, I actually thought that I would just quickly show the photograph that I took this morning of it, but I didn't want to disrupt someone um, you know, from the back end. I mean, there we go. Uh, let me just check if it comes up. Uh, I think you should be able to see it. I mean, there's sunrise uh, right on super tubes, Jeffrey's Bay, absolutely beautiful. And, and as someone had said before, we want to earn foreign income while living in South Africa. I mean, I could never get access to places like this and pay for these kinds of things if I didn't also have foreign income and foreign um, investments could work, working for me. And that's the distinction. I don't want to have to keep working for my US properties. They're going to have to work for me. And that's obviously what we're opening up here. So from our side, I'm wishing you all a very good evening. Lyndon, great to have you online and to chat and to speak about real estate. Um, it's, it's a tool for us to use to create the lives that we love to live. Um, reach out, play around the platform. And of course, we look forward to touching base with many of you again. So from our side, have a good evening wherever you are. Um, good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night.